Hello and welcome back to Hirewell's YouTube channel. Don't forget to click that subscribe button below to stay up to date on all of Hirewell's new videos. And now Hirewell Talent Insights presents, So You Want a Job in Sales, Sales Vocab and Definitions. Hey everyone, welcome to this episode of Hirewell's Talent Insights. I'm Emily Gore from the sales practice. Um, Jack, you want to say hey? Hi, everyone. Uh, Jack Smith, also with the sales practice. I've uh, <clears throat> been with Hirewell for about three years. Uh, today we'll be you know, kind of diving into um, you know, some definitions of sales terms for recent grads and overall just you know, that sales folks uh, could benefit from. Absolutely. And we actually thought of covering this topic because when I got into recruiting, like now almost three years ago, there were all of these acronyms that were just being thrown out. And I was like having to Google things on the side because I didn't want to like seem dumb. Like I didn't know what I was talking about, but it was like right. SAS, B to B, B to C, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, you're just saying letters and numbers to me. Like, I don't know <laughs> what you're talking about. So we wanted to create this video. Um, we think it'll be helpful for everyone, but specifically for recent graduates, if you are trying to break into this space um, so that you can have knowledgeable conversations and not be like I was three years ago when I had no idea what anyone was talking about. So, Especially in, in an interview process, right? If, yes. You know, hiring managers are referring to these acronyms. Um, you're going to want to be knowledgeable and at least have an idea of what, of what they mean. Exactly. So we're going to throw out some terms. Um, we're going to start off with like pretty standard because a lot of our clients are in the SaaS space. SaaS. That's not like SaaS, like S-A-S-S. -S. That's like me, a little bit of sassy, but this is SaaS, <laughs> S-A-A-S, and that stands for software as a service. And that's a huge buzzword, right? Like, yeah. you know, everyone wants SaaS experience or background or interest in it. So the um, the way I like to look at it is like it's a it's a software right that you can companies can use and access um, as a service right. So then they're yep. they're using the software platform um, you know for every sort of industry to really accomplish a business outcome. Um, it kind of in the simplest term. Literally crushed it. Next term. B to B. So that's like the letter B, the number two B. And that stands for Jack. Business to business. Um, so I, on the contrary, business to consumer. So business to business. And that's, you know, a lot of the companies we work with, right? It's, um, you know, a crossover, like as opposed to a client that we work with, for example, that's business to consumer um, in the automotive space, right? So like if you're an individual that's purchasing a car, that's a, that's a consumer. That's a business to consumer model. Um, the business to business you know, kind of space is a lot more growing and that's um, just as simple as it sounds. B2B versus B2C. Only one letter off, but it makes a big difference. <laughs> it does, absolutely. Okay, we are crushing these terms. Okay, next one, and this is, I mean, hot, hot as hot can get right now. BDRs and SDRs. We are hiring for like 20 BDRs and SDRs right now. And I've been reaching out to all of these like entry level, you know, fresh college graduates and right. I put BDR, SDR in my message. And I'm like, wait a second. What if they don't even know what BDR, SDR is? So BDR stands for a business development representative. And SDR stands for sales development representative. And these are the folks that are hitting the ground hard doing lead generation for companies. So you might think of like cold calling, cold outreach, um, doing the lead generation and prospecting and qualifying leads before they pass it off to usually, are you ready for another one? Right. an AE, an account executive, to take through the rest of the sales cycle. And I like to look at it as, you know, top of the funnel. So that's top of the funnel. for, um, the, you know, companies, the the BDR, SDR is that first point of contact, right? So they're yeah. usually the face of, you know, the organization um, or the voice of the organization. 
that's the first outreach, right? Like you, they might not even know what the company does. So really, you know, kind of kicking off the sales process that can lead to um, you know, some pretty great long-term partnerships, um, you know, right off the bat. Exactly. And I know we mentioned that AE, that account executive, who's then, you know, once that lead is generated and qualified, they're taking the client or like the prospective client, I guess I should say, through the rest of the sales cycle, um, you know, from from demo to close. And I know we have demo too. Like I saw a demo and I was just like, what kind of demo? Like what kind of demonstration? Right. Um so there's usually a demo, a demonstration as part of the sales process. And that's essentially just the account executive, or maybe it's a solutions consultant or solutions engineer or sales engineer that's showing the prospective clients how the software works um, and just kind of taking them through that entire demonstration of what they'd be getting if they do decide to purchase the software. Right. And a lot of times it's an example of if you were to purchase the software go into a partnership is an example of what that profile would look like, what that um, software would do for your organization. So that's where exactly. you're kind of getting in the weeds. You're seeing what the um, actual software would do. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's, you know, kind of the, that's the selling point, right? That's where yeah. um, you have 30 minutes and, you know, you have those 30 minutes to get them across the finish line and, you know, really kind of show what the software can do. Love it. Let's chat about different kind of verticals, like areas that you can sell into. So this is another one that when I first got into recruiting, I was like, I don't know what this means. Um, so people talk about SMB sales and enterprise sales, mid-market sales. So let's start with SMB because we love acronyms in this space, don't we? SMB sure stands for small and medium businesses. Did I get that right? Yes. Um, so and like oftentimes it, it differs, but like the way I like to look at it is kind of zero to 99 employees, right? Anything under a hundred. So you have your startups, you have your really you know, kind of small mom and pop shops, right? That are like really um, they kind of under that hundred employee threshold. So they're still mm -hmm. relatively young as a company. I love it. And then as we talk about the different kind of, you know, sizes of companies that you could be selling into. I feel like we should also address kind of another important vocab term, which is what the sales cycle is like. Sales mm -hmm. cycle is how long it takes from the first point of contact. Like we said, that's usually that top of the funnel, the SDR, the BDR reaching out to the prospective client all right. the way through that signing of the contract, the close. So from beginning to end. So with that SMB, like the smaller, medium business size sale, you're looking usually at a quicker sales cycle. It can be a little bit more transactional, anywhere from it took me one phone call to close this deal all mm -hmm. the way to, you know, maybe a couple of weeks, but it's usually on the quicker side versus once we're getting into the enterprise space. So selling into the enterprise space, you're selling into like, these are your big fish. Right. right. These are like your big sales selling into large companies, sometimes Fortune 1000, Fortune 500 companies. Your sales cycle is likely going to be a lot longer. Mm -hmm. Right. When we're filling any of these enterprise account executive roles, sales cycles are anywhere from like, I'd say three months minimum, usually yep. around like six months minimum, anywhere from like nine to 12 even 15 to 18 months sometimes to close a deal from the initial contact with that prospect. Right. And the complexity, right? Like grows as you, you know, get larger in terms of the deal sizes in the, the enterprise space. It's definitely, it's a long process. You have to have, you know, it might be a first point of contact two years ago. And then, oh, it, you oh know, it's, it's, it's all about the right time. For those Patience. folks, so that's a little bit more strategic, a little bit more consultative um, of a sale, but, then again, a, a lot larger from a deal size perspective yeah. and, you know, partnership. Absolutely. Which is a lot of the times why, you know, when, when companies are hiring enterprise account executives, they're looking for people who have a bit more experience because like you mentioned, it is a lot more, um, a lot more strategic, a lot more complex of a sale. A couple more things before we wrap up. OTE. So that's on target earnings. I get that question a lot. That's probably, you know, one of the top two or three terms that, what does that mean, right? So on target yeah. earnings, um, you'll have, 
kind of a set expectation as a sales development representative or a business development representative to hit X amount of meetings booked, X amount of mm -hmm. demos scheduled as we just talked about. So the on-starter earnings is what you can project to make if you're meeting those goals, right? So say it's 40,000 base, 60,000 on-target earnings. You should plan to make 60,000 for the year if you hit your goals, right? You know, a lot you're of doing what you're supposed to be doing. Yes, exactly. Which if you're going above and beyond, you know, you should be exceeding the OTE number. And a lot yeah. of the companies that we work with have uncapped commission models and, um, you know, that's what makes a career in sales so attractive for a lot of people. Exactly. And I would, I would also say like maybe a tip, if you are entry level, a good question to ask is like, how many people are hitting their on target earnings, right? Because a company might throw out this really radical number and you're like, oh, that's really legit. I could make 80K as right. a BDR my first year. But a good question to ask is like, how realistic is that on target earnings number? Um, it's a great well, question because a lot of times companies can throw a number out there, but how successful and how exactly. likely are folks to hit that number? And a lot of times, the, you know, recruiters that you work with or, or, or companies will have an insight into that if they if they know the organization. Um, yeah. I can speak to an average of, of folks that are doing well and hitting that OTE number. Absolutely. Well, I wish that I had this video three years ago. Right. Um, we hit on a lot of the major like acronyms, terms, vocabulary for folks in sales, if you are entry level and there are other words or acronyms that are popping up that you want to know, like, what is this that you can, like you mentioned, speak intelligently in an interview, um, understand what recruiters are saying when they're reaching out to you, definitely throw those terms in the comments in this video. We're always happy to, as you mentioned, Emily, we have over 20 positions right now for um, entry level you know, folks. So even if it's hopping on a call for 15, 20 minutes, you just to go over what that looks like, what the opportunities entail, what, you know, kind of questions you should be asking in an interview. We're more than happy to chat. My email is jack at hirewell.com. Beautiful. Yours, and I'm, I'm Emily um, Igor, E-G-O-O-R at hirewell.com. As Jack mentioned, we're so happy to chat. Um, we can chat vocab. We can chat all the things. Um, so thank you so much for joining us. This was an episode of Highwell's Talent Insights. Um, we will see you all next time.